Hey everybody, uh, this one is about how to uh, encrypt or password protect files and folders that are um, th that you need to have password protected basically. So I'm going to delete this real quick. The first thing that you'll need is a program called 7-Zip and you should note that whoever, uh, so, so if it's only you that's going to use this file or this folder install 7-zip, download and install and you'll be good to go. But if you need to send the file to someone else, they will also need 7-zip to open it back up as well. But it's freeware, it's got no viruses or anything, uh, and it's also small. So type in 7-zip download, the first thing you'll find is this, it's that. Probably all of you have x64 uh, Windows, but if you know that you have 32-bit or if you're running an old version of Windows, or have an old computer, you might want to get the 32-bit version. 32-bit um, will work on a 64-bit computer, just not as well um, I, on the extreme end of things. Um, you could also get this MSI installer. It doesn't really make a difference. Uh, Microsoft installers and executables for installing programs will work the same way. So anyways, uh, when you download it, you'll get this. Double click it and install it. It just asks you where it wants to install. You click install, it does it. It takes about five seconds on even a relatively old computer. This computer is like 10 years old as it is and it takes about five seconds. So once you've got that done, uh, and this is just some school stuff here. Let's say that I want to encrypt all of these things so that they cannot be opened up uh, unless the person has a password, right? When you install 7-Zip, one of the things that it does is it will create a context menu here, or it will create an entry within your context menu. So what you can do is select all of the files that you want to encrypt, right click, do 7-Zip, and do add to archive. And then you'll see that you, you want it as zip.zip. Um, you'll see the name of it, which will just be the name of the folder, but you can rename it if you want to. Leave all the rest of the stuff the same and leave AES-256, that's the type of encryption, uh, and enter a password. And if you click show password, then it won't show it. it. Then you won't have to enter it twice, sorry. If you have it unchecked, you'll have to enter it, enter it twice. So I'm just gonna type password for this one, click OK creates it, and in this case it actually put it in that folder. So, now when you go to open it up, you still see all the files, but when I go to open it, the destination could not be created, it cannot extract it. So let's try right click and do extract all. Extract. Um, actually, let me change this real quick. Right click, extract all. It won't work anyways, but Extract, and it gives you this error. So, I skip them all, what you'll see is there's nothing there. So, what you need to do to get to those files afterwards is right click, do 7-zip, and do uh, extract here, and then it will ask you for that password. Put in the same password that you had put in previously, which you should not use the word password, by the way, if that's not obvious. Click OK. And in this case, yeah, and then it dumps it all onto my desktop. So I should have known better than to do that. But at any rate, now you can actually open it up and view it, and it'll actually work. Now I have to delete all of this junk. Sorry about that. So the question is, why would you want to? Well, obviously, if you've got stuff uh, that is, you know, private, that's personal, that you don't want other people to use or to see, that's one main reason. But there are other reasons, too. If you want to send something over the Internet in a very secure way, that's another way to do it. So, like, if you're worried about someone who may have hacked your Wi-Fi or something like that, or you just have something that's really sensitive, like personal information or financial information, you can uh, zip it like this with a password first then send it, have the person on the other end unzip it by you telling them the password. And I would recommend, like if you're gonna email it to the person, then call them or text them and tell them the password so that you don't wanna email it with the password, obviously, or else anyone who intercepts that email and gets the file, gets the zip file, will have the password as well. 
So uh, that kind of works as almost like a pseudo two-factor authentication type of thing. Not exactly, but kind of. Uh, the other reason is for putting stuff onto online um, drive services. So Google Drive and things like, uh, what's one of the other ones? Mediafire or I think possibly even Mega NZ uh, for two reasons. One, if you, you may have had this happen where you go to put a program onto Google Drive and it won't, it, it, it will usually upload but then won't allow you to download it again because it will say this is an executable or it's an installer and it might have a virus or it will straight up do a virus scan and find a virus and it won't allow you to download it. Uh, I've literally had one or two occasions where I had to send a virus to a person, or rather a program that I knew had a virus in it, and they knew that as well. And I had no way to send it because Google would automatically delete it, uh, not allow it to be downloaded on the other end. If you add a password, it gets past Google's virus checking because Google can't open it. Um, I believe the same is probably true for Mediafire and for MegaNZ and for OneDrive and Box and whatever the other you know downloading uh, or file sharing services there are. The other thing is I've seen where certain media files are flagged. Um, so like if you try to share a video that's copyrighted, which obviously you shouldn't be doing in any illegal way, but at any rate if you try to, uh, sometimes those services will flag it and will not allow it to be downloaded. They'll say something about there being a problem with this file or you can't download it on copyright for copyright reasons or something like that, uh, it will flag it. Well, if you zip it into a password protected zip folder first and then send it, the person on the other end, again, will be able to download it and open it up using that password and then they'll have the file because that service doesn't know the password, can't unzip it and look at it. So there's more than one reason. Mostly I think people would probably do it for you know security reasons. And it's not completely fail-safe. It uses that AES-256, which could be decoded, um, but using traditional methods, if you have a random password, um, or even if you have sort of a pseudo-random password, one that's not like password1234, because ones like that are easy to guess uh, and are easy for machines to, for, for you know, AI or, or for password cracking software to crack. Uh, if you have a random password, though, it can take hours, days, weeks. I'm not sure with 256-bit how long it theoretically takes, but it takes a long time to crack passwords like that. And until get com computers become much, much faster, it's going to take a long time. Um, so, you know, there's, there's that too, that sort of security safety bit. But just know that AES-256 is not totally um, fail-safe, but it's used all over the industry in a million different ways. And it's pretty damn good, you know, and that's why it's used. So anyways, hopefully that helps somebody. Um, yeah, enjoy.